All right, I'm a real estate agent, so I'm going to talk about keys to success in real estate. But honestly speaking, this is kind of general. Um, these are things I use in uh, my everyday life in other aspects that are not related to real estate, right? Um, one thing I found out is just consistency, right? Consistency. If you look at a lot of um, people over time, those that are considered the greatest in their field are not those that had the highest peak, um, but more so those those that had a longer stay at the top. Um, don't want to get into a LeBron and Michael Jordan debate, but the LeBron and Michael Jordan is the only example I can think of where Jordan is considered the greatest, even though LeBron has stayed on the top for longer. If you consider like a Randy Moss and um, Jerry Rice, for instance, Jerry Rice is considered the greatest because he stayed consistent longer. But nobody is going to argue that in a one game situation, you know who's the better person Randy Moss is definitely better right had a higher peak but he couldn't maintain it longer that's just a sports example when you think about um, let me see other examples there's so many other examples uh, that I don't want to get into but people that are considered the greatest in their fields just tend to do it longer consistency is better you know also you get to appreciate the grind you as the individual getting things done you when you get to look back and see the journey that you've come from and, and and what you've been able to accomplish you just get to appreciate it more right so in uh business um or sales which is what real estate is really your sales uh um if you're in the sales business you may not think you're in that but that's what you're in um i would say follow-up is, is is very key and consistent follow-up right even if some people do cold calling some people do door knocking different ways to generate leads some people do hand mailing um some people do zillow leads even if you do zillow and truly leads you still got to follow up you know you get the co uh the contact you show the property you don't just let it die you you can consistently follow up and um, you don't want to be that snake oil salesman kind, kind of bothering people you want to be cognizant of feelings and uh, moods and uh, timing you want to consistently touch basis with them so whenever they think real estate you come first or whatever you're into if whatever business you're into whenever they think about that service or that product they think of you that's why all these companies run all these ads you may not want to buy um a car this year but they're still running car ads all the time so when you think of buying a car you think of that person right or that company so being consistent but being very mindful of how to do it it's 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 kind of like an art form you know you give and you take you slowly want to do it you don't want to be overbearing on people that can be a turn off right what consistency does is it builds momentum right it's like an avalanche well, once the snowball starts rolling it's small and it starts picking up and picking up and picking up and it just gets bigger and that's really what the real estate thing is about or most sales businesses when you first get going um i was into another thing that's kind of related to real estate but not quite it was in the real estate field but i wasn't selling properties but it was a sales thing in real estate but mostly to contractors and when i first took over that kind of thing it was slow but just constantly calling and, and, and building relationships, all of a sudden we got to the point where we were overwhelmed with uh, contracts and, and, and clients. Same with real estate, right? I would even just say, don't even get into it if, if you're thinking this is gonna be your only source of income. Don't even get into it then. Uh, have a backup, have something that's gonna sustain you. Come into it with the long run in mind, right? real estate is going to work out for you if you can that's not only real estate they say average business in america the average business in america fails within the first three years that's just business in general because you're coming out with a product nine times out of ten unless you're inventing a brand new thing that hasn't existed somebody is already in that market right but for instance when the Tesla came out, that EV, you kind of had hybrid cars, but a full-blown EV wasn't a thing yet, just mass-produced. So that was like a new product, you know? 
So unless you're doing something brand new, somebody is already in that field, somebody already has a market um, presence and you're trying to take over and take and step into their field. And honestly, it's just not fair. When I think about being in real estate now and just when I came in, just the new me trying to compete with this me right now, it's not even fair because right now, I already built some relationships, not only with buyers, sellers, lenders. There are processes that I have learned from mistakes I have made, and I'm trying to, po I still am po polishing my processes, but it's like I'm building this machine now to where things are just going. Coming in, I just was like trying to learn. So if you're coming in new, and you think about those that have been in it for a while, and, and I'm a one-man wrecking crew, but some people work in teams to where not only do they have experience, but they also have the mastermind. If you know about um, this book, very popular book, I don't, it doesn't come to mind, but it was um, about the gentleman who did a biography of, uh, not a biography, but he wrote the philosophy of how to succeed and he was assigned that task by Andrew Carnegie. The book's name is Think and Grow Rich. I don't remember the author, but he was talking about the mastermind. One of the things Andrew Carnegie, Ford, um, Edison, all these top inventors and um, capitalists of early America talked about, early industrial America, let's not go too far back, talked about was the, the collective mind, getting a group of people to think together and work towards one purpose. That is way more effective than me just being a solo agent. The only reason why I don't do that, as, as of now, my schedule doesn't permit me to be able to have these meetings. I just, my schedule doesn't permit that. So it, it doesn't work for me. So I work things out with my schedule but teams sometimes can be more effective you can make let's say you can make more money solo because you keeping all your commission but teams can sell way more houses and you know it's just a machine you know one person is doing all buyers one person is doing all sellers one person is doing all admin you know so for a single agent like myself you can go hire an admin and take that off your plate but you got to do the buyers and the sellers. You know, a team, on, a team on the other hand, who's doing the buyers can go to the open houses, who's doing the sellers can go to the listing appointments, right? I say all that to say, building a momentum, right? Going out to these, constantly doing this, having that machine. So we were talking about coming in new, starting a new business, starting a new thing, and it takes time to build processes. Like, I remember when I started sending out hand mails, I would go buy the little envelopes from uh, like the local grocery store, the local Staples or something. Uh, maybe it's 45 in a box. Now I'm buying them at, uh, let's say 500 of them in a really big box, you know. Same thing with the, the, the paper I used to print on. I used to print on, um, I used to, you know, just buy one at a time, now I'm buying a big box of them, right? So it's just, some, and it's cost effective now. I'm spending more, but it's just cost effective. Even the stamps, right? And I, I know there's even a better way of getting electronic stamps. That's what I'm looking into next. I used to initially buy the 12 book of stamps. Now I buy them in like hundreds, right? Um, let's see, I think I have some of them here. Yeah, so these are all like rows of stamps right here. And I don't know how many, this is a hundred stamps. So it's just like a few hundred that come in this and it's a lot cheaper. And it's just like a, you're coming in new into real estate and these are all processes that I had to learn. I'm buying 12 books of stamps, which come on a little sheet of paper. It's not cost effective. And now it's, just, and I even know this is not the most effective way and I'm looking into buying a machine that can stamp them. You can also do postcards, but sometimes that personal touch works. Not only you can print stuff out, but sometimes you handwrite stuff. People just appreciate that, or it catches their eye when it's handwritten. So I'm just saying all this to say, consistency, you only learn all these things and you get better at your craft when you become consistent. You know, if you do it one or 
or two times, you're not going to learn and see what works and what doesn't, right? So you got to keep doing it and learn and say, man, those 12 stamps are a waste of time. Let me buy more so it just works better. Even like with printing, printing, right? At, at, when I used to print out stuff, I would go do it at the office or go to the FedEx office, which is just not cost efficient nor time efficient. I, you know, then I said, let me buy a, a printer. So you got the printer. Now the whole machine is available to where you just, you just move it. Um, so I'm just saying you, you learn by doing and getting better. And also just get up and do it, right? When you procrastinate, nothing gets done. Then five years go by, a year goes by, and you're thinking about getting this thing done, but you could have gotten it done already if you just started. You just gotta get going, you gotta get going. Get going for the first few minutes and just you'll just see. And you gotta develop the resilience to keep going. You know, nothing is easy, right? Nothing is easy in life. Some people are lucky, things fall at their lap. Others gotta grind, right? So just keep just got you gotta get going, right? And as far as in staying consistent, one key thing I wanted to talk about was the British people say finish your dinner, right? In America, we say finish your food, right? Finish your food, right? I don't watch sports too much. I, I, I think the last Super Bowl I watched was when Ray Lewis won his last Super Bowl years ago when he was retiring. The only reason why I watched that, growing up, I used to love the Ravens, and uh, you know, I really like um, Ray Lewis when he was playing. And uh, I think he was getting ready to retire. He announced his retirement the year before saying this is my last year so i was shocked when i saw the news last year ray lewis has made made the super bowl said let me watch it right that was years ago so i really haven't kept up with sports like that too much just busy now you know i mean life changes these are just things about staying consistent certain things gotta go in your life i used to love watching football every sunday i used to love watch uh playing um video games you know so it's amazing when i i have a friend out and i see they play games and i just say wow i once was there there's no way i can be able to be consistent and try to build something if i'm playing video games all the time you know or if i'm watching sports all the time or if i'm scrolling on the phone all the time so certain things just gotta go in order for you to be able to be consistent to attain what you need to attain because these things kind of control you. These are billion dollar companies that invest so much in sucking your attention. So you just, you just need to be able to do whatever you got to do to stay consistent. I promise you, some people take it personally at times when they call me and they can't get, get to me. They get mad and then they say, I'm never going to pick up your call. Okay, if you want to do that, fine. You know, it's just a, a matter of... Is that call about to distract me from what I'm doing? Everything is written down. Sometimes I veer off based on the importance of the call, but for the most part, I want to control my time in order to be able to accomplish certain things. So certain things got to go. And you pick up the phone and you start scrolling. Next thing you know, hours have gone by and you're scrolling and you're just distracted. Certain apps are not even on my phone. So certain people send me messages and they get in their feelings thinking, you know, it's, it's not personal. It's just, I don't keep it on my phone because it's gonna go down a, a left turn constantly scrolling. So I log on on the laptop when I have time and I check certain apps. I know I can't get all the features at times because it's not on the phone. They want it on your phone. That's why they don't allow certain features on the, on the computer or the iPad. They want you to have it on your phone but I try not to upload certain things on my phone because I'm human and these things are all distractions. So I try to limit certain things. You need certain things for, as tools for work. Other than that, uh, for the most part, I just use them to upload stuff and get out of there, you know, not to, or if I want to search something. So in order to stay consistent, try to limit distractions, right? Um, and finish your dinner is what we were talking about, right? finish your food finish what you started so back to the super bowl thing i was talking about this year for some reason i was sitting there watching the first half of the super bowl based on where i was it was playing i got to see the first half i didn't see the entire game but the first half of the super bowl i saw the 49ers they were doing they were really crushing the kansas city chiefs right 
And but they weren't scoring. I think they ended up scoring 10 points. You know, when I left, I left, I told everybody, I said, look, the Chiefs are gonna win this game. Kansas City is gonna win this game. The reason why is there are certain people, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, these are just sports. I'm using this analogy because people can relate to them, but there are certain people you can see even in the business world like Jeff Bezos, like uh, Elon Musk, even um, Warren Buffett, right? Certain people that stick with it, right? And get it done. Um, they said Warren Buffett's net worth kind of blew up in his 50s because of compounding, staying with it, consistency. That's what we're talking about here. And finish your dinner and consistency, how does that relate is when you start something, you gotta go at it. There's so many times, right? For young men, you see them accomplishing something. They get a little notoriety and then they allow distractions to demolish them, right? Whether it's a woman destroys them or just the love of the life rather than the grind that got them to that point. So many times we see people grind, but once they get to that top, they just dip right back down because they lost that discipline. That's what I mean by finish your dinner, right? You look at a Tom Brady, he always finished the, the, the job at hand. And that's what I thought about with Patrick Mahomes with the Super Bowl. I'm like, Chiefs are gonna win. There are certain people you don't give the opportunity to beat you. They will beat you and you're in business. You got competitors that are going to make that other phone call. When you don't feel like it, your competitor is going to make that call. When you don't feel like it, your competitor is going to knock on that door. You got to finish your dinner. Once I saw the 49ers playing around, uh, it's, I think it's also in the 48 Laws of Power. Completely, dis let me see. There's a law in the 48 Laws of Power. Let me see if I can look it up. I'm not sure. But it talks about um, finish your enemy completely. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? Let me see if I can look it up. Law 15 out of the 48 Laws of Power says um, crush your enemy totally. And that's what I was talking about and consistency. Once you start, I hate to say, but once you start, once you smell blood, you know, you step on the neck, you step on the gas, you floor it, you go and you crush it, really. So when I kept seeing the Super Bowl, the first half, I said, Kansas City is gonna win this game. The 49ers didn't finish their dinner, they didn't crush. And then the next day, all over the news, Kansas City won. It was almost like a given. Certain people you don't leave a little loophole for. You don't leave a little gap for. That goes to your life. Once you start being, here's the thing, success you gotta work for. Poverty is given. If you don't work for the success, the poverty is just gonna come in, the distractions are just gonna come in. Those are easy to be distracted. That's why I'm saying finish your dinner. Once you start working on it, crush it because that distraction just comes in so easily. And if you give it a little loophole, next thing you know is this, you just wanted to uh, Google something important or do a quick ad, then you saw a notification, you clicked on that notification, then you saw another thing and you keep scrolling and keep scrolling, next thing you know, two hours have gone by. Why? Because you didn't crush this thing called distraction. You gotta crush it. You left, you left the little loophole and it became this big thing, kind of like the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs. They left the little loophole for them and then they came and crushed. Crush this thing now because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Why put up for tomorrow what you can get done today, you know? So you just gotta stay with it and, and stay consistent. Like I said, just starting out, things were, were very slow. Things were very slow. All of a sudden I went, you know, gotta know how to touch bases with people. You know those that you wanna talk to all the time and then some of them, maybe six months, a year, you, three months, you send them. There was this lady, I reached out to her and um, built some rapport. She was cool with uh, doing business with me, but she told me just not right now. So I fell back, this was last year, but when the holidays rolled through, like I said, the hand mail, Send some Christmas cards. Periodically, I would send just market stats, things like that. 
And randomly this year, she called me. Hey, come take a look at my house. You know, went over there, talked about everything. And um, the timing is still not right because there are other factors. So it's like, hey, timing is not right. But I like what you're doing. I got two friends who are looking to buy a house. I gave them your number. See how that works? Listen, you don't even count those until until the commission check hits your bank. It's not your money. So you don't even count it. But I'm just showing what consistency can do. Same thing with the gentleman um, I was prospecting. He's a, also a seller. And um, he called me randomly like, hey, I've been interviewing agents. I kind of like the way you've been consistent. I think I'm going to go with you. But I have a friend who's selling as well. If we both list with you, can you take off a, a point on the commission? Say, all right, we can talk about it. But just me constantly showing the effort helps that, right? You never know. They said, uh, there's so many sayings about that. Some people say it's better to be lucky than good, but somebody said, I get more lucky when I work hard. I'm luckier when I work hard. More things happen when you work hard. You know, some people have gotten deals when the call they didn't want to make. That has happened so many times with me prospecting. I don't feel like it, I don't feel like it. All right, man, get up and do it. And then you make that call listing appointment right even right now i'm under the weather and the time is right this time is correct right here right it's 20 past uh one and that's a.m that's not p.m that's a.m and i'm shooting this video excuse me because I, I had it written down i got a wall board over there we are right down stuff to do um possibly i'll show you guys but um I had it written down to get done. Yesterday, an agent called me, hey, we're doing the final walkthrough tomorrow. We're closing on Friday. I said, I mean, we're closing on the first. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, everything is done. I just texted her back. Everything is done except the furniture hasn't been moved. I'll move the furniture out over the weekend. Then she texted me back. That's not gonna work. We're closing on Friday. I'm like, whoa, I thought, the first was Monday. Because I'm thinking I got a closing on Friday and one on Monday, but it's like, wow, there are going to be two closings on a Monday. So I had to get up and go move that furniture. It's too late to arrange that. So I had to wake up at six this morning, go to Home Depot, get a um, like a box truck, I, you know, go there. It's not too much stuff. The owner had already moved a lot of it out. It was just one or two pieces that the uh, the buyer didn't want in the house. And then the owner's like, not even in the state of Maryland at the time. So I had to do it. And um, that's what I was doing all today. And by the time I got done with that, did some other meetings, it's late, then the day is gone. But guess what I had written down? Get this uh, video done today. I can easily, lay back and, and and do it tomorrow nothing wrong with doing it tomorrow right but why put up for tomorrow what you can get done today and also the the, the reason why i'll show y'all is this calendar right here i shared it with you guys and as you see these are check marks right i got two negatives these are two negatives two days that i didn't do what i was supposed to the blank was something i did that is important i wrote it down but well three negatives one two three four and i hate those and i didn't want to add another one here you know so i had to get a positive check and that's all you do you stack good days and it's like that snowball so these, these are just little tools for me everybody has what works for them some people work off calendars like on their phones i'm an old school guy i kind of like to write i walk around with notepads at times to jot down ideas i know the technology is good some people can dictate it something about writing it down and scratching it off is done or physically checking and when you take a look at your calendar and you see all those check marks and then you're just stacking good days and the reason why i had to do this video today to go back to this I'm going on two weeks straight of stacking good days. I'm like, so the reason why I'm sharing this is because consistency is like a habit, good or bad. You just develop it. And it bothers you when you start trending negative or when you break 
uh, when you're stacking good days and you break that, that bothers you. But you don't get to that point until you get going. So you got to get going. One, it's like working out. One, two, three, four days. Now, the 60 or 70, 80 pounds that you were struggling with is just light, you know. So your body got to get used to it. But you got to force, you got to force the first few days, you know. Then it just becomes a thing, right? Hope that helped out.